Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja and today in my series on Heart of Darkness, I'll be talking about the beginning of the novella and I will first provide you a summary of the first 10 pages, you know, in my book from page 7 to 17. And if you're following it along on a different book, just remember the beginning and the scene where Marlowe describes the French ship firing into the continent. That's the part of the narrative that we'll be covering. So let me give you like a slightly graphic summary of it and then I can come back and we can talk more about it in detail. We start with the main narrator introducing the four characters on the deck then he introduces Marlowe. Marlowe enters the scene and opens his story with a sentence saying and this too was once a dark places of the earth right and then he gives an account of the roman conquest of england and moves on to tell us comparatively what saves us what saves them is the idea we we'll have to figure out what that idea is we get his account of how he got his job his visit to company headquarters and his conversation with the doctor and then his 30-day journey to Africa, including the ship firing into a continent. So there are quite a few significant things in this opening of the novel. First of all, when the main narrator introduces the story, he introduces us to the characters, but also he shares with us this idea of the ship you know, anchored at the estuary. But he gives us the idea, his imagination of what my, has transpired historically from that space. That's our cat playing in the back, by the way. Uh, and then he gives us a sort of a romanticized history of people who had previously gone out from that port to conquer the world, the traders, the knight errants. He names some of the historical figures as well as the ships. Right? So the idea is he's situating us in space, which is River Thames, but also its history and its connection to the empire, right? its significance. And as we are thinking about that, as we are being introduced to that, that's when Marlowe interjects with that first sentence. And this too was once one of the dark places of the world. Right, that's the technique that Marlowe always uses throughout the story, this historical juxtaposition. And then he gives us his speculation about how it would have been, right, when the Romans conquered England. And I think that was in the second century, right? And what kind of a place this must have been. Of course, to them, this must have been a wild place, right? They had come from the civilization, the Roman Empire. And he gives us you know, an account of uh, sort of a hypothetical civil servant who travels through the land, collects taxes, what keeps him going, right? Maybe, you know, the privilege of rising in ranks or maybe providing for his family. So Marlowe speculates on that, which gives us kind of a juxtaposition to the account of the travel that he will give us later, right? But then he gives us some really interesting ideas, right? He talks about the dark places, the empty places on a map, right? And that most of the times this is just plunder when people go and conquer people who look different from them, right? Whose noses are flatter than the others, right? So he's aware of the brutality of any form of colonization, especially in the past. But it, then he gives us some redeeming qualities of the British imperialism. What he's saying is what saves us the idea, right? What is that idea? The civilizing mission, right? The Christianizing mission, whatever idea, because we can tell that Marlowe doesn't really take it seriously. He knows that it's an idea that mobilizes physical events. 
I mean, the language itself shows it because he says, oh, the idea that you can bow down to, that you can sacrifice, and efficiency, right? Efficiency of the system itself, of colonization. So in a way, what he's saying is what we do is different. It's driven by a good ideology and it's efficient and that saves us, right? But when we hear his account of how he got his job, of course, his aunts get him the job. He's going to work for this company that extracts a lot of wealth from Congo. And he goes to visit their office, right? Nothing efficient comes across in that visit. It's kind of an, an office that has women knitting in the front. There is nothing professional about it. People rush him in give him the paperwork, sign him, and they treat him as if he's expendable, right? That's the idea that is coming across, that this is a profit extraction mission which doesn't care about the people that it sends out, but it is not even very well run, right? And then his visit to the doctor, right? The doctor does the medical exam, but he also measures his skull and tells him that he's doing some kind of research, right? And that's kind of a foreshadowing because the kind of research we can surmise he is doing is that a lot of these European men who are going into Africa are driven mad, right? They go crazy and he's probably hoping to write something about it, but Marlowe kind of guesses that that's what is going on. And then it's Marlowe's journey on a steamer to Africa. And that too describes to us the immensity of Africa and the coast that they travel where they dump troops to protect the little one flag operations, right, trading posts. And throughout that description, as men are disembarked, they go to protect the posts, the posts are there to collect materials. What comes across very clearly that it is a poorly run operation, but also against the immensity of Africa, this is just, you know, very small and insignificant. That's the sense that comes. And it's highlighted when Marlowe explains that instance of that French ship, right, that is anchored by the coast and it's firing its guns onto the coast, which looks like, to Marlowe at least, that you know he's shooting into a continent. And meanwhile, the crew of the ship is sick and they are dying, right? And people try to explain to him that, oh, there are natives in the bush, but not necessarily something that can be seen from his point of view. So overall, the story is being set up. We are being taken through Marlowe's recounting of it from his getting the job, from this European corporation, a continental corporation, which isn't very well run, which basically shows that they're just about the profit. They do neither care about the natives nor the people that they are sending out and Marlowe is one of them. We don't get a very positive impression of them. And then we get through Marlowe's eyes the immensity of the coast along which he travels for 30 days to get to the mouth of River Congo. And then in the next part, we will see how he gets inland and, you know, how he does his job. Also in this section, there are of course references to Marlowe's own childhood where he talks about his childhood dream of going to empty places on the map, right? And that is an imperial mode of thinking when you look at map and the role of cartography in colonialism, how the places were mapped, how they were represented as empty even though natives lived there, right? And how, you know, Marlowe kind of laments that no, those places were no longer empty. And we can talk about it more in another video. There is another scene in the office when he is visiting the director where he looks at the map and points to different colors on the map, right? That's how Africa was divided amongst different European powers after the Berlin Conference, after the scramble for Africa. And remember, he says he was going to the middle of the continent, which is Congo, and which was yellow, the only one which was yellow. And we know because that territory was the only territory which was individually governed by King Leopold II of Belgium, right? And that Congo Free State had a special status, 
right? So these are some of the things happening in the first 10 pages, and this is a brief summary and some thoughts about it. Let me know what you think or if there are any questions that arise from it. I'd be happy to hear them and post them in the comments and I would love to answer them in another video. But just keep in mind these are just the 10 pages and all they cover is the introduction of the story, Marlowe's attempts at getting a job, his interview in Europe, and then his travel to Africa. That's all that's covered in this part of the plot and this part of the story. That's all. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time with another video on Heart of Darkness.